Today we're going to look at scales, Phrygian scales in particular, and a little bit of music theory as it applies to the guitar and flamenco. I will probably use some words that, depending on how much theory you already know, won't mean anything to you, uh, in which case just ignore them. I'm going to try to explain this in a way where you can learn the scales for the first time if this is really your first introduction to the idea of learning a scale or hopefully get a little more information about what's going on if you already know a thing or two about uh, music theory. The scale that we use in flamenco most of the time is a Phrygian scale. So without getting too much into music theory let's just jump in and look at a Phrygian scale and what it is. We're going to talk at first about the key of E Phrygian which we call in flamenco we call this por arriba. And the scale we're playing is, if it were on the piano, it would be all the white keys. So no accidentals, no flats, no sharps. So we have E, F, G, A, B, C, D, and then E again for the octave. Right? So if you don't know the names of the notes, it's open, first fret, third fret. On the fifth string, open, second fret, third fret. And on the fourth string, open, second fret. That's one octave, right? That just means from E to E. And then in the same position, if we continue, we can do E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, which is starting from this E, uh, second fret of the fourth, third fret of the fourth, open third string, second fret of the third string, open second string, first fret of the second string, third fret of the second string, don't mind the dog. Uh, open first string. That gets us to another octave of E, right? So we have E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. And then E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. So our two octaves give us... And because they're so easily playable in this position, we're going to add F and G. Right? Because we could obviously extend up a whole other octave if we wanted, and even more. But for now, we're going to play from E, the open sixth string, to G, the third fret of the first string, and back. So the first thing we're going to do is just get used to the notes in this universe. suggest that you play these in position which means that you're basically assigning a finger to each fret so if you're playing the first fret it's going to be your index finger if you're playing the second fret it's going to be your middle finger third fret will be your ring finger and in a moment we'll look at some g sharps which will uh, require your pinky on the fourth fret so the first thing i would do is get used to just playing the scale up and down <laughs> suggest that you repeat the E's, which are the octaves, just to really get familiar with the range of each octave of the scale, right? Because the full scale is really just this. playing two octaves plus a couple notes on the first string because these are all notes in the scale that are available in first position. Once you feel like you have a pretty good handle on these, what I recommend to get to know the scale a little better than simply running the scale up and down is play groups of three. So we're going to do starting on E. Now we're going to start on the second note that we played, the F. Now we're going to start on the previous note. Previous note. And when I say previous, I mean we land on G, the previous note was F. We land on A, the previous note was G. And then back down, we would do three notes. So, 
more time. We're going to go up three notes at a time, starting on E, starting on F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. And now, going down, G. All the way back down. The next thing I'm going to recommend you do is basically skip a note. So we're playing thirds. And what I mean by playing thirds is that rather than playing a note and then the next note, we're going to skip a note. So we're going to go E to G, F to A, G to B, A to C. Instead of going G to F, we're going to go G, E, F, D, E, C, etc. And it's just a nice way to get to know the scale pretty well. So the next thing we're going to do is add the G sharp. So without getting too much into the theory of it, I would just point out that in our E chord, we have G sharp, which is part of the E major chord. But in our scale, we have G natural. So normally in Western music, uh, the scale and the chord would be completely related. And the chord would be made up of notes that are in the scale. So that goes a little bit different. Um, and that's one of the reasons that the sound is so immediately recognizable. But the fact that this note is so clearly in the universe of solea means that we can kind of use it as an option in our scale. So if we replace all our G naturals with G sharp, so we would get a scale that sounds like this. combine the two so we could do G natural G sharp or use any combination of G naturals and G sharps uh, that we want really so and if you know a thing or two about music theory again you might notice that this starts to sound an awful lot like a harmonic minor, right? Which is a minor, a natural minor, is all the white keys also, same as E Phrygian and C major, but that G sharp gives us that a harmonic minor sound. So that's, we're not gonna get into the whole theory of that at the moment, uh, but it is a useful thing to note. This is one key, right? One of the nice things about the guitar, um, and I should say the guitar is a, a frustrating instrument to try to learn theory on. Uh, it can be very opaque because a lot of notes repeat uh, and things are not laid out in a nice linear fashion the way they are on a piano. But one of the nice things that we can do is we can take shapes and patterns and move them around and without knowing a thing about theory or even the names of the notes that we're playing, we can transpose. So if I know that this, <laughs> a Phrygian scale and I know that the nut of the guitar can be replaced by a bar anywhere then I can take this pattern of notes and I could play it say here and I know that that's a Phrygian scale I'm playing the same pattern now I'm using different fingers because the in my index finger has to bar so whereas here I would use my index on the first and my middle on the second and my ring on the third if I'm barred I have to use these fingers. And I can extend the pattern. Right? And now suddenly I'm in A Phrygian. And even if I don't know what this note is that's sharp 
you know, that corresponds to the G sharp in my E Phrygian scale, I can still say, oh, I know that I can do this. And that works. So that's kind of one of the nice things about the guitars. We can move this Phrygian scale anywhere. without really having to know as much about music theory as we would if we were trying to recreate this scale on the piano. Very quickly, I want to take a moment to look at what the Phrygian scale is. Uh, we know that in E, it's all the white keys. So if we know the names of the notes at all on the guitar, we can say, okay, what are the white keys, basically the, the notes without any accidentals, sharps or flats, on the sixth string? And we would get E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, right? E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. Now, another thing that we learned from looking at this is what the relationships of the notes are to one another in the scale. We know that open to first fret is a half step. And then if we go up two frets, that's a whole step. So we have a half step, a whole step, a whole step, a whole step, a half step, a whole step, and a whole step. Once we establish this, we can actually do this on any string. And play a Phrygian scale. I don't even have to know the name of this open string or of any of the notes along the way or of any of the accidentals I'm using because I know that if I do half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, I get a Phrygian scale. So it's a little, again, the guitar's not a clear instrument to see these patterns on. So what you can see very clearly on one string doesn't look the same when you play one of these patterns, which is why so many guitarists learn patterns for scales. So we're now going to take a minute and we're going to look at the other shapes, the other patterns that we can use to play for gene scales. And once we combine that with um, with knowing how movable scales can be on the guitar, we're going to suddenly be able to play a Phrygian scale just about anywhere on the guitar, which is kind of cool. So the other most common key in flamenco is what A Phrygian, right? Now, we can get into our theory and say, oh, A Phrygian is the Phrygian mode it's the third mode of f major therefore the key signature of f major is the key signature we're using and that has one flat in it which happens to be b flat or without knowing any of that we can say let's take the information we know from before half step whole step whole step whole step half step whole step whole step and we can either just from that sound go okay we can find our scale we can find the scale using our ears. There's a lot of ways to do this, but if it means anything to you, um, it's one flat, B flat. Uh, and we're gonna start on A, we're gonna go A, B flat, C, D, E, F, G, A. And then if we continue up, we're gonna go A, B flat. We're not gonna play the open second string because that's B natural and we want B flat. We're gonna go to C, D, E, F, G, and because the A is right here, we're going to shift out of position for just a second to get the octave of the A. We can go back down, A, G, F, E, D, C. Don't play the open second string. Go to B flat on the third string, and then A, second fret of the third string, open, fourth string, third fret, second fret, open, fifth string, third fret, first fret, open. And to play the rest of the notes that are available to us in this position, we would have G, F, and E. And we come back to A. We already played A Phrygian a minute ago here. And now, we're playing it in open position plus the shift to, to our octave A. So, once we learn this, I would do the same thing that we did before.
just to get to know the scale a little better. Just as we had G sharps that we could use in our E Phrygian, in A Phrygian we have C sharps. quickly there's three other keys that we're going to look at because they come up uh, pretty often in flamenco the first one is f sharp phrygian which is better known as the taranta key right so the first thought that we would probably have is okay our root is on the sixth string this is our chord which means that this scale that we've already learned just be played barred at the second fret. And we would be absolutely right. But I recommend that you learn the open position version of this scale also. Uh, because there's some nice things that we can do with the open strings, of course. So in that case, we have on the 6th string, 2nd fret, 3rd, on the 5th string, open, 2nd fret, 4th fret, on the 4th string, open, 2nd fret, 4th string, on the 3rd string, open, and 2nd fret, on the 2nd string, open, 2nd fret, 3rd fret, on the 1st string, open, 2nd fret, that's our octave, and then if we want to keep going up, 3rd fret, and 5th fret. Another very common key is B Phrygian, and this is the Granaina key. So, in this case, we could actually think about, okay, B Phrygian, we know this way of playing the scale. Or we could think about this scale that we already learned. that part at the second fret. But again, it's useful to know the open position version because we can really use the open strings quite a bit. So here we have... And you'll see I actually shifted because I'm so used to playing a B voicing here with my index on the second fret, I started in second position. And because I have that C natural over here, I shift to first position and then back to second position to play the F sharp. Back to first position for that second string and third string in this case, and then I shift back could of course do but that basically defeats the purpose of learning all the open strings so you can do a combination of open strings and shifting or key we're going to look at is uh, what we call the minera key. Uh, a lot of people call this A flat, which I totally understand, and I called it A flat for a while, but it made much more sense to me when I finally started thinking of it as G sharp Phrygian, uh, which happens to be the relative Phrygian of E major, and then it started to make a lot of sense for me. But either way, it's G sharp, which means we can play our scale here. Position, we start with our pinky on the G sharp. And even if you know nothing about modes, uh, what I just said, 
uh, about G sharp being the relative Phrygian of E major basically means that the notes of E major are the notes that you want to use to play the scale. So if you know an E major scale, which you may well uh, know, then starting on G sharp, if you're not as familiar with any of these, then sixth string, fourth fret, we start with our pinky there on the fourth fret, open fifth string, second fret, fourth fret, on the fourth string, we don't play it open, we go to the first fret, second fret, fourth fret. On the third string, also not open, first fret, second. And then we're gonna play the open second string, second fret, fourth fret, open first string, second fret, fourth fret, and then back down. through your patterns of thirds or make up any other patterns to play the more different ways you play a scale the better you are going to know the scale the least helpful thing you can do is just run up and down the scale back and forth uh, playing every note in a row because it's just you it's just less likely that you will really know the scale intimately so get to know one of these first I would say uh, and by far the more important ones are E and A and once you feel really comfortable with those, you'll start to have the sound in your ear, and it'll be a lot easier to then think about our key, our key, and even the key, or any other key you might run into.